This video is to instruct and inform you about the calibration of your system using Dirac Live Active Room Treatment. Your ISP must be updated with firmware version 4.5 R0 or later. The Dirac Live Calibration tool must be on version 3.65 or later to support Active Room Treatment. Active Room Treatment is included free of charge with any Storm Audio ISP sold after January 1, 2023. For older products, please visit the Dirac Live online store to acquire an active room treatment license for your product. In this video, we will show you how to perform a basic Dirac Live calibration with active room treatment. This is an example of how to utilize active room treatment and your room needs may vary. Please consult with your local Storm Audio dealer or consider a Pro Remote assisted calibration if you are unsure how to proceed after this video. During calibration, the Dirac Live tool has control over the ISP. Therefore, in order to prevent interfering with other Storm Audio processors on the network, the ISP and theater or zone you wish to calibrate will have to be put into Dirac Calibration mode. Begin by accessing the main speaker's landing page of the web user interface. Select the theater or zone you would like to calibrate and click Edit. It is always best to start from either a fresh profile or one you have prepared for the calibration if you've chosen to do so. Locate the Dirac and Setup button above the current profile. If the system has multi-way or active speakers, click on Setup. Ensure that every channel or driver of each multi-way speaker is grouped together so that Dirac Live does not treat them as separate speakers. Do not group subwoofers, as ART works best with more spatial variations and also as only one sub will get ART filters. Should you need to use multiple subs as one, array them physically to one output of your ISP. Click Close to return to the main speakers page. Now click on Dirac. A dialog window will appear instructing which parameters of the current profile will be taken into account. Dirac Live will always account for manual parametric EQs as well as level and polarity adjustments in the current profile in order to keep speaker manufacturer's profiles intact. Delays will be set to zero as they will be determined by the Dirac Live tool. Dirac Live will ignore all base management settings and treat all speakers and subwoofers as full range speakers during the measurement process. This allows Dirac to verify how the speakers and subwoofers behave globally and allows for a better base management response. Once finished, Dirac Live will export a new profile leaving the current one unadjusted. Click Start New Calibration when you are ready. On your computer, open the latest version of the Dirac Live tool. If you need to update Dirac, please visit www.live.dirac.com forward slash download. At the time of this video, the latest version is version 3.6.5 and it is the first version supporting active room treatment. When Dirac Live loads, you should see the current version as well as your login information. If you are not logged in, please click on the menu button in the top left and log in. This allows Dirac to autosave the project file to your hard drive so that if the Dirac Live tool crashes, you can easily recover the project. It also links the art license you might have acquired to your processor. The processor should be visible as Storm Audio ISP host in the center of the screen. If it is not, you can also access it by directly entering its IP address in the top left here. Click on the Storm Audio ISP to proceed. In case you previously calibrated the room using Dirac Live, you have the option to reuse the project to avoid redoing all of the measurements. If you wish to redo all the measurements, please watch the basic calibration with Dirac tutorial available on our website to cover these steps. If instead you want to reuse your project, click on Load Project. Select your former project and click Open. Note that the loading of the project into ART can take time, depending on your channel count. Please give ample time for this to load. Once loaded, access the Filter Design step. Do not make any changes to the volume calibration, arrangement, or measurements from the existing projects. The tool will show the Filter Design page with the previous mode used. To avoid a longer loading time the next time you reuse this project, we recommend you save it now. Then select ART. At this point, some pre-processing will occur, which will also take some time depending on the number of speakers in the system. On the right side, you will find the art groups that are predefined based on information provided by your processor. Groups share common adjustments. It is therefore critical to verify that the speakers in the same group are with similar characteristics in terms of bandwidth, especially in the low frequencies. Groups can be rearranged simply by dragging a speaker from one group to another or to create new groups. 
Once your groups are well arranged, we can start tuning the parameters used by ART. Compared to bass control, ART can make use of all capable speakers in the range below 150Hz to improve the acoustical response and control of the decay time of the entire system, not only the subwoofers. It is therefore critical to provide accurate information about your speakers where needed. Take some time to notate the published frequency range of your speakers by the manufacturer. The main concept behind the powerful control of decay time in ART is based on speakers being co-optimized to reach the desired impulse response and target curve by assigning speaker support groups to each ART group. While the Dirac tool suggests the support groups in a fresh project, using an existing project requires manual definition of the support groups. A set of sliders are available at the bottom of the frequency response window. Clicking on a line will activate or deactivate a support group. Each support group consumes a certain amount of filters when activated. In the case there are not enough filters to allow all support groups to contribute, the total amount of filters available will be shown here in the lower right and will get updated following group selection. The frequency range in which a support group is allowed to contribute to an ART group is called the support range. The support range shall be adjusted to match the specifications of the speaker at the low frequency end of the support range to not overload them. On the high frequency side, speakers can be left up to 150 Hz or decreased if the support speaker is really close to the listener compared to the main speakers, which may cause support to become audibly detracting. All groups can act as a support group to the main speakers group for the best control. Nevertheless, if the number of filters available is not sufficient, some compromises will need to be made, such as prioritizing the ear or main level speakers groups and the subwoofers groups before the use of any height speakers group as support groups. Note that for speakers or subwoofers capable of infrabase, you will need to set the low frequency value to 20 Hz and enable the infrabase activation checkbox. The group will then play infrabase. Do this for each ART group. When adjusting the subwoofer group, it is recommended to limit the support to the other subwoofers. If you choose to allow speakers that can go really low in frequency to support the subwoofers, it is recommended to lower the upper support frequency range to the same frequency as the subwoofers. By default, all support speakers act with the same strength. Should there be a need to play with different support strengths, the adjustments are accessible on each ART group by clicking the triple dot button in the top left corner of its box. This button is only available on ART groups and clicking it unfolds the parameter panel. To adjust the strength, play on the support level. The higher the level, the lower the support. While minus 18 dB is the default, minus 24 dB would provide stronger support and minus 6 dB would provide lower support. Next, we need to adjust the target curve. You can either use the auto target made of the two slider adjustments in Bass and Trouble and shape it to your preference, Considering a higher level in the low frequencies and a slight decrease in the high frequencies offers better satisfaction than a flat curve most of the time. Or there are three predefined curves we use for cinema, one for the main LCR channels, one for the surround channels, and one for the subwoofer channels. Starting with group 1 and 2, load the LCR cinema target for the left and right and center channel groups, or just the left and right channel group if you are using a phantom center. Next, proceed to the groups containing surround channels and load the surround cinema target curve for those channel groups. Finish by loading the subwoofer cinema target to the subwoofer channel group. You will have noticed that there are no crossover adjustments as in traditional bass management. The reason is that ART will optimize the low frequency reproduction using all support speakers defined and according to their support ranges defined. When you are happy with the target response of each group, click on Calculate. The Dirac Live tool will now calculate all of the filters needed to correct your system. Once complete, select Proceed to Filter Export. Dirac Live will always show one slot, as it will create one new profile from the data created. Each theater or zone in the ISP can have multiple profiles. Give the calibration a name and description that is meaningful. Click Export. When the Dirac Live tool is done exporting the profile, it will return to the filter design page. Now return to your web browser showing the processor's web user interface. The web UI will ask you to give a seating label to the profile and confirm the name and description. Click Save. The calibration will now be visible as a profile. Base management will say Dirac and the crossovers will be inaccessible. 
Click on Delay, Level, Limiter, and Polarity to view the Dirac Live calculated coefficients for both level and delay. You will also note at the top of the level there has been a global gain added to the profile. In coherence with psychoacoustics, the human ear and brain has a tendency to decide that louder equals better. Dirac Live will never boost the level of a channel, but will cut all channels to normalize them. Therefore, in a direct comparison, the calibrated profile may be quieter than the raw system. The 6 dB gain added to the profile will allow you to accurately compare your calibration with the raw system, and you may need to increase or decrease the level to make it appropriate. It is now time to audition the system. It is best to use a combination of known music and cinematic content to verify the system's performance. You may wish to make fine-tuning adjustments, such as level and in some cases even delay. You can, of course, adjust the target curve and measurement positions in Dirac Live if you like. However, Storm Audio has a built-in trick to make this a simple adjustment for the installer. On the profile bar, select Duplicate. A new profile will be created with all of your Dirac Live calibration data, but now with further editable delay and level parameters, which will be added on top of the Dirac Live calculated coefficients. Note that altering the delay and level too much can affect the ART response. For such changes, we recommend to modify the Dirac project and export a new Dirac profile. Rename the profile to something meaningful, as in version X 80J for adjusted. Once you are satisfied with your calibration, click Save on the profile and then Save on the theater or zone to return to the main speaker's landing page. Lastly, we need to allocate the calibrated profile to the preset used for the theater. Click on the presets landing page of the web user interface. Select the desired preset containing the theater or zone you just calibrated and pick the new profile from the profile dropdown. You are now ready to enjoy your calibration results. Please keep in mind that while this is a great application that is capable of many things, it is still software trying to understand and tailor the response of the room to the human ear, and the end results may not be perfect. This concludes this video tutorial. Please visit us on our client portal at stormaudio.com for more information and on YouTube for more videos like these.